Time for every new isekai in fantasy anime for next season, Fall 2024, from Mr. Any News. Let us get it. As stacked as the new fall season is- WAIT! It's starting with ReZero Season 3 content. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut ahead. I am- I am not. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Goodbye. Now, before we get into the there next anime, in addition to all these new anime to watch from next season, I've also got an amazing recommendation for you to read as well. This is a fucking ad. This is an ad. With today's sponsor, Web Novel, ah, you can you read got the us. first legendary Beastmaster amongst a plethora of other amazing stories. Is it good? This one in particular takes that core theme of beast taming, then fleshes sure. it out in a way that very few stories have done before. Yes, there is an overarching conflict involving politics and war, but the main draw here is the focus on the beasts. Is it actually like, good? Imagine a story where Aura right. from Overlord was the protagonist. The beasts are all key characters as well, and the role they serve is more than just to make the main character stronger. So, if you're looking for a series with a power system different from what we usually get, the first Legendary Beastmaster is definitely for you. Okay. You can read it on web novel using my link down in the description, get along it, guys. with other amazing stories like solo leveling, Mushoku Tensei, and even Eminence in Shadow. There's thousands of amazing reads, both familiar and new, waiting for you. Sure. Just click the link down below to gain access go to Go get it, go get it. Alright, anyway, next. Next we have Spirit Chronicles Season 2, which is- Ah, Season 2 content, which means that uh, we're probably not gonna cover this. I'm not gonna brute force myself like I did for fucking our last crusade. Remember that shit? Season 2 is coming out this season, summer 2024. And I, I try to fucking brute force that shit down my audience's throat. Terrible idea. It's never worked out. I don't care if a season two is happening. At the same time, I'm not even covering it. If the community wants it, you'll simply vote it in. It's the isekai where the protagonist's past and current life intersect with each other. There's the orphan Ryo who already existed in the current world, then the student Haruto who died in his previous world. It was what- what the hell CGI fucking vehicle animation is this? ...in the current world, then the student Haruto Look who died shit. in bonk, his bonk. previous <laughs> world. It was one day that Ryo woke up with the memories of Haruto, and that's pretty much where the story begins. Okay. Season 1 was mostly an introduction to the world, characters, and protagonists, so in Season 2 you can expect to get more into the bulk of the story. It will have more of those standard fantasy tropes though, so there'll probably be a waifu that needs saving, then that waifu will probably end up joining his harem. Yeah. That being the case, if you like season one, then you're definitely gonna like season two. Based on the premise of a guy just getting hit by a fucking truck in a bus and then getting reincarnated as his kid named Haruto and then having these powers, uh, it, it, it definitely feels like one of those trashy isekais that we could definitely watch, right? But again, I'm not gonna fucking shove this down your guys' throat just like I did for Last Crusade only to have a failed project. You will simply vote it in if you actually care about this series. Everyone's favorite edgy protagonist returns with Adipo Let's Data go! Season three, this time separating from the conflict with his classmates and- Y'all think that ReZero Season 3 is the fucking- You think ReZero Season 3 is the ultimate isekai coming up in Fall 2024? Nah, bro. Adipo Data Season 3. Adipo Data Season 3 is gonna clear ReZero with this in-depth lore, world-building, mysteries. Oh my god, I cannot wait for my goat Hajime to come back. Oh, it hurts me to say this. It hurts me to say this I, <laughs> sarcastically. ...with Adipo Data Season 3, this time separating from the conflict with his classmates and yeah. instead getting into a revolution with the Halia. After leaving the capital and heading to the Empire, Hashime finds Shea's tribe to be in the middle of fighting the Empire, mm. a point made extremely clear by the number of heads being chopped off. This will be the new conflict Hashime gets involved in. <laughs> the bunny clan is so funny because they were so cute and cuddly before Hajime arrived, and then when Hajime coached them, right? <laughs> Quote unquote coach, they all turned into like maniacal killer bunnies, but the whole arc seems to be centered around like new antagonists is like the actual like empire or something and there's really shitty people in the trailer that's doing all creepy shit i'm sure there's like shitty crown princes and stuff and there's like this long dispute between the bunny clan and like the empire and we're gonna get revenge on behalf of shea it's gonna it's gonna be pretty hype i think along with the new labyrinth and more harem stuff no more labyrinth i fucking hate labyrinths and adi Fureta. why do you care about labyrinths bro straight up it's just Bullshit CGI monsters that you know aren't that important, 
You and I both know that these fights don't fucking matter. You and I both know that the animation is dookie. All we care about is that the when we clear the labyrinth, we get that origin magic or some shit and a little bit more info on like the potential truth of the world. Sure, sure, right? But like, god fucking damn it, these labyrinths are so boring. I hated that shit in Arifureta. The only part I love is literally like what's at the end of the labyrinth to get more lore, right? What takes to get there literally doesn't fucking matter except the first labyrinth, which was kind of hype when it was just Hajime and Yue just trying to say, you know, just like um survive out there and Hajime go like going like Super Saiyan mode. Yeah, I remember that. That that was kind of hype, but for the most part, the labyrinth it's it's just I do not spend more than a fucking entire episode on it. Please just leave and then I care about more of the conflict with the other humans and other factions. It seems they might be exploring more of Hajime's character this season. That and his dynamic with his harem. Shangri-La Frontier returns with season 2. Copyright Strike Frontier. If you see any anime reaction channel covering this shit, let them know you will get striked down by Kodansha. Many anime reaction channels. The, your, the brother is yo, I literally told those dudes, you gonna get clapped for your copyright strikes. They're like, bet. We'll take a gamble. Two episodes out, the rest is on Patreon. Guess what happened? They got double strike. That's fucking scary. Your boy Rock Lee got clapped by that shit, right? So many other channels also got clapped by that shit. Just this company, Kodansha, if there is any anime that is from Kodansha, not just in terms of what's on my anime list or any chart, you have to actually upload the video and see if the copyright holder on the YouTube content ID of Kodansha. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. They will strike you. They don't care. You can win against the copyright strikes, but it is not risking your entire channel over. We will watch this shit on Patreon exclusives if you actually want it. Do as well, and after watching episode 1 back at Anime NYC, I can confirm it's more or less pretty much the same. It's still a solid anime about gaming, and it still has that high quality animation. It looks great though. Season 2 looks like the opening too, so high. The Hollow Arc, which is actually a different game from the one Sunraku is usually playing. Yo, we going to GGO? <laughs> if we think that this is SAO, right? First season, Eincrad? Second season, <laughs> we going to GGO, bro? A different game? Their new, new Nerve Gear game? Full Dive? It's actually my personal favorite part about the anime since it's pretty entertaining to see Sunraku's skills in other games. So, that's where I'm pretty sure the story is headed this season. It does look very good, though. Another returning video game fantasy oh! is Gun Gale Online. <laughs> Speaking of Gun Gale Online, here's the alternative. And, listen, if you love this show, great, right? Enjoy it all you want. My opinion of this is that motherfuckers telling me to watch this shit, no one actually cares in my channel. People only cared about GGO due to Kirito Shinon, right? If the OG crew isn't there, this alternative has no fucking meaning. Mine and it's P90 Rusher Len. A series some of you may know is actually A1 Pictures though. Ah shit. Ah shit. It's A1 Pictures, guys. I just Oh, that's making me want to watch it. Like, they're gonna give a good product. Like, because it's A1 Picture certified, I know this anime is gonna be like a minimum 7.5 out of 10. Probably higher. I don't know. In terms of production value, at least it's gonna be amazing. <sighs> But it's season two, right? It's fucking season two. We gotta watch season one on top of that. Vote it in. Actually, one of my personal favorites. Ever since the Death Gun arc in SAO, Zaza. I've been a big fan of the shooter style world GGO is known for. The whole anime battle royale thing just appeals to that part of me that's addicted to FPS games. So battle royales are pretty fun. It's not really a tournament arc, but it is the same type of competition until one is remaining. Season one isn't A1 Pictures, really? Huh. Makes me, make me want to not watch it. <laughs> Makes me want to fucking skip season one and go to season two. Nah, I, I don't know what we're going to do with this series. So, to see Len and her crew back playing GGO like it's Warzone, well, that's an itch I've been wanting scratched for a while now. As for what you can expect, well, aside from Len taking advantage of her broken character model, there's another squad jam tournament that she'll be competing in. Broken character model. So are you saying that the whole, like, Petite, tiny aspects. Less, less hurt box, right? You're smaller. You're a smaller target. So, like, that's, like, her gimmick? That this is a crew of just tiny little girls, but they might be actually big-ass men? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Their hurt box is smaller, right? There's little... 
less surface areas to shoot and they're fast as fuck. Aside from Len taking advantage of her broken character model, there's another Squad Jam tournament that she'll be competing in. Squad It'll Jam? It'll be more or less the same action and BS we've come to expect. Not Bob? At least up until that tournament BBO? is over. Also, it, do people here like reference people like Shinon or like uh, fucking Satellizer? Like the winners of Bob 1 and the different Bobs? Do they ever mention actual essay with GGO lore or is it like a separate universe? Where GGO does exist. Kirito gets reference? Okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. ...and BS we've come to expect. At least up until that tournament is over. Other fantasy sequels include the Beyond... Season 1 is by the studio that ruined Devil's a Part-Timer. So Devil's a Part-Timer Season 2? Right? That studio did Season 1 of GGO. Alternative. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's a tough sell. That's an extremely tough sell. Maybe they actually gave a fuck about that anime, but A1 Picture Season 2, that's, that's like pretty hype though. Like A1 Picture Season 2, like, oh shit. Other fantasy sequels include the Beyond the Snow Saga for Blue, Blue Exorcist. Exorcist. Season 2 for the revamped sequel of Seven Deadly Sins, then the two Isa- No longer, no longer Seven Deadly Frames here, but this is like spinoff, right? One day, I think that I, my audience is deaf. It's hard to watch shows like Blue Exorcist, right? But Seven Deadly Sins, maybe one day. We'll see. These kind of battle shonens, I'd love to check it out one day. Seven Deadly Sins, then the two isekais of Demon Lord, Retry, and Tensei Kizaku. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, we already did Appraisal Isekai here. It was actually a pretty solid show, right? I'd say this is like super high six or like seven point something out of ten. It was very enjoyable. It was. And they took the time to actually build out the world and for us to give a fuck about the dip like the diplomacy and the politics at play. I'm definitely going to check out season 2. And then uh, the, the Demon Lord retry? I don't know, but it's an isekai and I already saw CGI in it, so it's something that we're definitely going to check out, right? Try and Tensei. Actually, I'm not sure if that was CGI. Of Demon Lord retry and No, it's not. Tensei Kizaku. All except Demon Lord Retry aired less than a year ago, so if you watch the first season, not much should be very different in the second. Okay. As for this new installment of Demon Lord Retry, it's an adaptation of the manga's sequel. Gecko. Studio Gecko, I have no clue. Something that came out shortly after the anime's first season. So, this will be a brand new- So hold up. Demon Lord Retry, this is season 2? Hold up, what's going on? It's an adaptation of the manga's sequel. Manga sequel? Do I need to- I can't watch it then. I can't watch it then. Something that came out shortly after the anime's first season. Wah wah. So, this will be a brand oh my new God. production with the new studio. <laughs> what the- <laughs> She is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. New production with the new studio and everything, focusing on the demon lord and his mysterious encounter in a dungeon. It also veers from the light comedy of the first season and approaches topics a little bit darker. There is still some comedy mixed in. <laughs> Why is she fucking bound by a collar and chains and she looks like she's just nutting, bro? Still some comedy mixed in, but apparently it's layered with some truly villainous behavior too. I can't say the quality looks any better than the first season, but perhaps the story will be entertaining enough to make up for it. Lastly, we have season 5 of Danmachi, Danmachi, which just like ReZero, I'll also be doing a recap for. Yes, sir. We left off. Uh, Danmachi, unfortunately, season 1 up till uh, beginning of season 4 does not exist in my channel. Fun fact, Danmachi season 2 is the reason my first channel actually got double copyright strikes, which I then started my new channel because of that shit. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... I love Danmachi. Uh, season 4 was amazing. The level of despair, right? The actual stakes at hand. The juggernaut, Ryu and Bell stuck down there in the really lower floors. It was amazing, bro. And the new season coming out, the trailer actually looked hilarious in terms of like preparing for the date with Seer, right? 20, 20 repetitions of give the flower correctly, the bouquet, right? Season 5 apparently is going to be even more insane than season 4. So I am pretty hyped for it. If you're not caught up, then I highly recommend you do since season 4 was amazing and mm -hmm. season 5 is going to be even better. Really? This too I had the opportunity to watch early and I can tell you the quality and plot have quite a bit going for it. 
For me, this story seems like it's about to get really interesting, since if you've been wondering about Freya. Sarah and the Freya familia- Exactly, right? Freya has been such an important character since the beginning of this series, but she has minimal screen time. Man. You drop this when they rescue the Fox Troll in the Red District? Oh, you got no fucking clue what happens at the end of that arc, bro. When Freya shows up? Oh my god. The whole Haruhime arc? Ugh. Bro, at the end, when, when she shows up face to face against fucking, what's her name, Aphrodite or some shit? Oh. Oh, that shit was cold. Yeah, that whole subplot is about to come to the forefront. It seems the mystery behind their connection is going to be unraveled soon. Mm -hmm. This brings us now to all the new anime, which if we Here start we with the isekai, we first have Loner Life in Another World. We will check that it's out. It's a novel with a premise similar to Arifudet. Passion did <laughs> interspecies reviewers. I hear a lot of things about that show. Never seen it though. To where an entire class of students get isekai one. Perfect. I love this setup. I love the entire classroom all being isekai. Now, is it a reincarnation or summoning? Day. The unique thing about our protagonist, though, is that just like the title states, he's a loner. Okay. He's an outsider who thought he could restart by getting whatever cheat skill he wanted. But he didn't get anything. Unfortunately, all the cheat skills were taken by all the other students. Classic, classic, and I... It's such a trashy setup, but ah, I fucking love this shit, right? The Arifureta setup, the failure frame setup, the Kumodeska setup, right? Entire classroom, established hierarchies. Everyone knows what everyone's all about. Then their personality is also then gets amplified with the powers given and, you know, oh, just peak fucking uh, isekai setup fantasy for me. So the only skill he could get was, you guessed it, the loner skill. One that makes him incapable of joining a party. Loner this skill? This makes him a recluse just like how he was in his old life, up until circumstances force him to interact with his classmates. Huh. It's until then though you'll learn about his loner type. Uh, I think I'm gonna love this anime. The, the whole setup, the whole premise, like, I, I, I love it. Getting isekai, being separated from the pack, and then you have OP power that doesn't seem OP later on, you show up, then you save these dumbasses or something, like, oh, I love that shit. It's until then, though, you'll learn about his loner-type powers, along with his completely ridiculous attitude towards everything. Okay. Like, when I say this character's ridiculous, I really mean it. Okay. So, if you want to see an isekai with a quirky protagonist and somewhat unique powers, then loner life in another world might be worth checking out for you. Yes, sir. And in our channel, we pretty much check out any isekai that exists. So, we will 100% check this out. But where's the yapping isekai, man? Next, we have the seasonal villainous anime, since oh. it wouldn't be a new season without a- We will also check this out. Villainous shows are very fun, and they are pretty much isekai too. At least one of them. This one comes from Studio Maho Film and- If they're, you know, reincarnated into an otome game, but it's looking like it's not. This is just straight villainous. It adapts the light novel, I'll Become a Villainous Who Goes Down in History. It's a fairly standard take on the whole villainous trope, except the unique thing here is that the main character chooses to embrace her role as the villainous. Okay, rather than so she's just gonna go around just fucking shit up being mean? I'm down. Try to avoid the bad ending surely awaiting her. She instead chooses to fully commit to the role she reincarnated into and- It is an isekai, got it. Well, yeah it is. Reincarnated into a different world and this is the isekai world, yeah. Become the greatest villainous the world has ever known. The thing is- the more she tries, the more the people around her start to like her. Hmm. So, all in all, it's your s- <laughs> Just a bunch of masochists. It's just, it's just my fucking chat. I just get fucking angry and pissed off and people just want me to just fucking hit you, you, you guys are like more, more. So this girl, this, this, she just goes on just be, she's just a mean bully. She just fucks shit up and everyone's like, oh my god, you're so cool, so charismatic. And she's like, ew, what the hell? Seasonal dose of shoujo fantasy. Okay, I'm in. Now, the rest of the anime are more traditional fantasies, so let's start things off with what I think looks best. Oh, you didn't talk about the yapping isekai, huh? Interesting. The yapping isekai was something that I was most an uh, anticipating due to just the nature of a dude. His entire power is just fucking talking. And somehow he's gonna get himself out of these situations, but uh... Oh, no, no, no! It's over here. It's over here. Notorious Talker. I thought that he was talking about, like, we're going into fantasy now instead of Isekai, but here we go. This is Demon Lord 2099. <laughs> Not Demon Lord Retried. This is Demon Lord 2099. Okay, Cyberpunk. Another anime from JC Staff, 
taking the whole Demon Lord resurrection theme and throwing it into the future. JC staff is... Kind of volatile, right? They are the studio that did One Punch Man Season 2, which I'll never fucking forgive. But... It, it's, it's a hit or miss with them, right? It's been 500 years since the Demon Lord was defeated, and with Japan now this cyberpunk metropolis, his reawakened self must come to terms with the changed landscape around him. Cool. It's a unique premise that finally answers the question I'm sure all of us have had at least once before. Why do these fantasies always have to take place in a medieval setting? Well, even though- th JC staff is doing Damachi, right? So I'm gonna assume they're gonna just focus on this only and... Wait, w hold up. Danmachi Season 5. Five of Danmachi, which Where's just like Free Zero, I'll also be in for to for me the merely their connection. Oh uh, yeah, Anyus didn't show me the uh, studio for this. Hold up, I actually want to know. I actually want to know this. Uh, let's look at the any charts. Let's look at Dan. Danmachi. Where's Danmachi? Oh, here it is. JC staff. Yeah, it's JC staff. Oh, what the fuck? Why am I so big? What the hell happened to the layout? What just happened? Yo. What happened? I have no clue what the fuck happened there. What? <laughs> some, I, I, I pressed some hotkey on my keyboard and then somehow it triggered the OBS, my cam frame to just take center stage. We're back, we're back. A anyways, the most important thing is it's JC staff here. JC staff. And if we go to JC staff, right? <laughs> Shit. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it's happening, of course. We've seen the trailer for that. Um. Here's Damachi, right? Anything else? Oh, they did 2.5 Ririsa as well. And Skimichi Mullet Fans. And level 2 cheat on... Uh, I mean... It doesn't have like the most amazing animation, but they're, they're alright, right? I, I think JC staff is like... I wouldn't consider them like an A1 Pictures. I would consider them like a tier below where... It's like satisfactory, right? It's not like amazing polish, but it's also not terrible. Yeah, I, I've seen, you know, Nanatsu, this one too, 7 Spellblades. In season 4, Damachi, they only give a fuck about Damachi, I guess, though, huh? And they just go all out with that. But, uh, no, I mean, I'm sure Damachi will get the treatment it deserves, but I wonder if the other, other animes will also get the same shit, like here. 500 years since the Demon Lord was defeated, and with Japan now this cyberpunk metropolis, his reawakened self must come to terms with the changed landscape around him. It's a unique premise that finally answers the question I'm sure all of us have had at least once before. What? Why do these fantasies always have to take place in a medieval setting? <laughs> well, even though- I love the medieval setting though. I'm not a big fan of cyberpunk settings. Sorry guys, that's just personal shit. That's why I love the ReZero world. That medieval fantasy setting is- Just love that shit. It's more space- uh, Like, I don't know, some, something about like futuristic- Cyberpunk shit doesn't really resonate with me. This world is still filled with magic. At least it's combined with engineering to make it more of a sci-fi fantasy. It's a take on the genre that we haven't yet seen. <laughs> Wait, is he streaming? <laughs> the Demon Lord is streaming? He's adapting to the modern world? <laughs> okay. ...that we haven't yet seen before. Hello. One I'm genuinely interested to see how it progresses. Okay. <laughs> There's actually two other fantasy anime JC staff are doing this season, and one is the time travel romance of the do-over damsel conquers the dragon emperor, mm. while the other is the stories of girls who couldn't be magician. I'm not too sure about these ones, guys. The former is a second chance redo revolving around an executed princess and her engagement, while the latter is an artistic slice of life focusing on a girl and her journey on becoming a mage candidate. They both seem to have somewhat decent potential, but what I'm more curious to see is how the quality stands more towards the end of the season. Four and a half concurrent anime- Yeah, with one Cause... Yo, this cover picture does not look good for Belle. He looks fucking zooted out. Yo, Frey been fucking feeding him something. 
Ew, Diddy, what you giving the kid? But there's like five animes, right, by JC Staff. And JC Staff's gonna go all in on this. So what's the distribution of resources gonna be? 80% into the middle. Then four of these separates, you know, 5% each. 80% into Danmachi. And then 5% on each of the other ones. I don't know. But uh, that's a lot that taken up on. That's a lot. Today is no joke. I mean, sure, some of this was probably outsourced, but- Bell is going to a free cough, bro. It's, it's, it's Freya's free cough. He's fucking inviting him to the party and shit. Dates. Even with JC staff being as big as it is, I can't imagine that- Wait, 2.5 data data size, two cores? Really? That shit's gonna have 24 episodes no for no fucking re- What? Interesting. This wasn't quite the crunch for them. But anyway, next we have the healer who was banished from his party is in fact the strongest. Oh, yes! I hear that title, I'm like, yes. This is the junk food. This is the core content in our channel. I hear titles like this, it's just so fucking perfect, trashy, isekai power fantasy. A standard fantasy portraying what Studio it's like to L. be in the wrong field of work. Here we have a healer kicked out of his party for not doing his job, only to reveal he's not really a healer at all. What is he? He's instead a close quarters fighter who's actually really strong. <laughs> the fuck? Just a melee warrior put into the healer class? Why then was he in a party as a healer? Well, those are the questions that keep me up at night. Alright. It's something I'm sure we'll figure out when we watch it. So, it's... It's not a wrong way to use healing magic because it doesn't really seem like this guy heals at all, but it is kind of same as like the healer guy is super OP brute strength, but we'll see what's special about this. I don't think this is an anime I'll personally get into, but if it ends up being good, then come back and let me know in the comments. I mean, just based on just these frames, still frames, it looks decent. Now, when they start moving, right, just like Tower of God Season 2, right, the answer studio, it looks pretty if you just pause the frames, but if they start moving, how fluid is it going to be? But I will definitely be there to cover at least one episode of this. You can let me know in the comments. This next one I was actually fairly interested in because mm. of the title, but... The yapping anime, the most notorious talker, bro. This is going to be interesting. After realizing notorious talker didn't mean he literally talked shit to everyone, my disappointment was immeasurable and my day was ruined. He doesn't talk I shit? I truly thought this was a gaming anime about a generational shit talker. <laughs> Turns out talker is actually just his job class and while the position- Nekopara? Hey, wait, Nekopara. I don't know Nekopara has an anime. I know Nekopara has a game on Steam. <laughs> There's an anime of it? The mission itself comes with zero combat skills whatsoever. It does prove useful in fulfilling the goal he's set up for himself. Okay. He's able to use his skills to unite all sorts of powerful people under him. This- So, I wonder what the talking is gonna be. Is he, is he like a smooth talker that convinces other people through diplomacy? Or does he have a talking ability like, uh, the guy from Jujutsu Kaisen where he says, Die, then you die. ...able to use his skills to unite all sorts of powerful people under him. This leads into the whole running the world's greatest clan thing, which could prove interesting given its departure from the standard action fantasy. Okay. Up next is Goodbye Dragon Life, which is the story of the strongest dragon reincarnating in the body of a human. He now lives as a regular villager, enjoying his peaceful life far away from the challenges of being a dragon. That is, until he meets a human-snake hybrid, becomes friends with her- <laughs> Okay. Up until then, I was like, what's, what's special about this show? What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, I see! You got a snake girl! Okay! Sets off. Yeah, yeah, Rezero spoilers are coming up. I see it. I see it. Rezero spoilers are coming up for some... Actually, I don't mind Rezero, like, character design spoilers. If he talks about the content, that, that kind of sucks. But if it's, like, character designs, I don't really mind. In fact, it just gets me kind of more hyped up. Up on an adventure together. This leads to a dynamic of monsters trying to get along with humans, and all the standard fantasy stuff that comes along with it. So this is that, uh... What is that anime? It's the one where the main character has a harem of beast girls. There's like a horse girl, there's like a snake girl, there's like a bird girl, there's like a slime girl, there's a bunch of that shit. But rather than just all being just fan service, it seems it's trying to take it more seriously and have an adventure. Yeah, Monster Musume, that's the one. But, uh, okay. 
characters trying to get along with humans, and all the standard fantasy stuff that comes along with it. An interesting looking comedic fantasy is Studio Zero G's adaptation of Let This oh, yeah. Grieving Soul Retire. This is basically... It's not Eminence in Shadow. Because Shadow is OP. The main character seems not OP, right? Based on the trailer we watched, his waifus are all OP. The people around him are OP. A story that centers itself around a Masayuki-type character. Oh, shit! Okay. I mean, yeah, it does seem like he just kind of gets away with it. I, I do love this kind of theme. It's, it's just... It's, it's like a bias I have for like a weakling that just kind of gets carried through charisma or luck. It's funny. In a world where treasure hunters are more prevalent than ever, one person's legend reigns above the rest. The thing is, this legend kind He's of manifested on its own. He's a fraud. You see, while he is revered by most as one of the best treasure hunters out there, our protagonist hasn't actually done anything. So, the anime is him and the people around him, building him up as this amazing person when, in actuality, he's really just normal. Kind of like an anime where Masayuki is the main character. I'm down. Finally, we have Nina the Starry Bride, which is more of a serious romance fantasy catered towards the Jose audience. Yeah, that's definitely not you guys, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it. There's a uh, ReZero spoilers coming up in a couple seconds. I'm good. I'm not. I don't think you guys are gonna fucking watch Nina the Starry Bride. It's fucking. What's that show? Uh, unknown me un un unnamed memories. That was a failed project in our channel. It was good for a bit, but then I don't think you guys are really eating this kind of shit up. But of all these animes, for sure we're gonna check out this right, the Masayuki anime. For sure we're gonna check out Notorious Talker, Banished Healer as well. Uh, Demon Lord 2099? I'm not really sure about this. I'm not. Villainous Isekai? Yes. Loner Life in Another World? Yes. That's a lot of fucking sh Bro, how many fucking Isekais are we checking out? J and like, Aeneas didn't even cover all of the animes coming out, like, this coming season. There's gonna be even more random bullshit that we're probably gonna check out, but that's a lot. We're gonna check out this. Damachi, of course we will. Um, these are like season 2 content we can't really check out. Then there's like, you know, like fucking appraisal isekai that we're also gonna be checking out because it's like, you know, uh, second season content. SAO Jiju, I don't think so. Shangri-La, we can't. Arifrata, we're in. Spirit Chronicles, we can't. Uh, this is an ad and this is fucking ReZero. And, you know, ReZero is obviously going to be the... Like, no matter how you place it, right, ReZero is going to be the anime, right, of summer, sorry, fall 2024, and not just fall 2024, I think maybe the entire year. Now, am I glazing? Am I, am I fucking crazy? I don't think so. I think that ReZero is definitely at a stage to pop off really hard because it's like entering this crazy fucking arc right arc 5 is supposed to be like the marine fort of re-zero in terms of just like combat it's gonna be just high power fantasy moments and then what happens is arc 6 right marine fort shit is gonna get the normies very happy and then arc 6 will happen and i hear that is like the arc like you thought the marine fort shit was hype no 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 i hear arc 6 even though it's not like huge combat and battles it's just like Imagine all the sufferings and all the troubles, all the trauma, all that difficult shit, just ex exaggerated to like a fucking 20 out of 10. I, I hear that's what Arc 6 is, and it's pretty much confirmed at this point that Season 3 of ReZero will cover Arc 6 and 5 together, right? Hopefully that is the case, but that's it from me. Please go give, oh shit, like Mr. N News' channel. Here's the video link, and I will see you guys next time.